Welcome guys. Wendy, do you want to take over? Wendy? Wendy, I think you're on mute. Cool. <laughs> Y'all, welcome back to our coffee hour session. All and right. Good welcome evening. guys. Wendy, do you want to take over? Wendy? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Can you no, hear me? I think, I think you're on mute. There's someone, um, there's Felix, I don't think you hear us. Oh. <laughs> Yo, welcome back to our coffee hour session. All right. Good welcome, evening. guys. Wendy, you want to take over, Wendy? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, just give me a second. Oh, I, I, I realize that there's like a double. Someone is playing something in the background. Can someone right. please take off? Thank you. Okay, guys, mute, mute, mute. Everyone, welcome back to our coffee hour session and good evening. Um, as always, I'm your host, Wendy, and this is the ADP List. Globi uh, this is a global community for designers by designers where we connect you with jobs and mentorships. So I just want to share that uh, this is actually my first time hosting in my entire life, uh, but I'm glad that I get the opportunity to do this for a good cause, uh, plus with an amazing bunch of people. It is a privilege to be working alongside with um, the team, Drake, Felix, Eric, Steven, so share the whole bunch of like mentors. What I can say is thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your time. Keep up the good vibes and keep expanding your time um, for meaningful work like this. Like even a non-designer like myself actually get to learn a lot uh, just by listening to you guys. So this week, uh, we're back on second portfolio uh, edition due to popular demand. Um, 400 over RSVP, which had shockingly doubled the first time. Thank you so much for your support and continue to watch our space um, for more ex exciting lineups. In order for us to keep doing um, this for the community and not let the efforts go to waste, can I please ask um, everyone to keep sharing your experience and stories with ADP List. Post it on social media, YouTube, um, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, or even TikTok if you're feeling creative. <laughs> so, all right, let's Welcome to of our amazing mentors now. Uh, we have Jill Quack from Automatic and Mel Sweet from Dropbox. Hi, ladies. What up? Yep. <laughs> so Jill, um, very proud to um, introduce Jill as a fellow Singaporean as well. Jill is working as a senior product designer um, and then previously, she, uh, she has worked with renowned brands like uh, Zendesk, Cartier, Dean and DeLuca, and um, Com Comedy Gazon, <laughs> if I don't pronounce that wrongly. And something interesting to share about uh, Jill is that she loves collecting greeting cards since seven years old. That's such a long time and a lot of greeting cards I can imagine. Actually, I do that too. And then Mel, Mel's from San Francisco. Hey Mel. So Mel is also working as a product designer. Uh, she had built her career working with companies like PlayStation, um, the NBA, my favorite, uh, DreamWorks, Strava. And something you don't know about Mel is that she started her design career in high school by creating merchandise design for British bands. And you know, the song that you just listened uh, to earlier by DJ Felix was one of the bands that Mel had worked with. How cool is that? <laughs> so I'm getting, I'm getting um, um, very excited for this session. Uh, let me just uh, get you guys started before I pass the floor over to uh, the two ladies. Um, can I just share with you guys that um, Put in your portfolio linked uh, in the chat box. Uh, Mel and Jill will be looking in uh, into the link and then pick one of you up. 
When you're selected, please turn on your camera and say hello. But we'll leave all the questions to um, the last part where we'll be having Q&A. Okay, um, during Q&A, just um, simple as that, uh, raise your hands. Um, the raise button uh, would be at the participant um, um, icon. Um, I think it's at the bottom of your, uh, of your screen. Um, if you're using a phone, then um, I think you got to figure it out. Um, it's just under participant button. All right, guys, over to you, ladies. Have fun. Awesome, thank you. Um, Jill, uh, we talked a little bit earlier, but is all right if I pick one from the list? Go. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and I'll give my feedback. And then, of course, Jill, chime in with your thoughts as well. Nope. All righty. So I'm going to start here with Sophia. And I chose Sophia's portfolio because it's not your typical portfolio. And that's what I really like about this. Um, it's held on Notion. So it's not Squarespace. It's not Webflow. Uh, you can make a portfolio in pretty much any surface uh, you want. And so doing it in something like this, which is considered like a, a cloud uh, word editing software is, is quite cool. So I like that first and foremost. Um, so she starts out with just her uh, bio, a little bit of information about herself, a link to a resume, and then two projects, contact me, and then I think this is a really good move as well, uh, allowing people to schedule a 30 minute call, uh, which is quite cool. Um, I'm gonna rip through this just because as a portfolio reviewer at a company based in San Francisco, Dropbox, I unfortunately just do the nature of the process of reviewing portfolios, don't have the time to read through each and every single one you receive. So I'm gonna be ripping through this as if I was reviewing it while on the job at Dropbox. So. Already, I'm like, I'm impressed. You're hosting it somewhere unique and interesting. You have the link to your resume. You have two projects that are present here, showing some good relevant information at the top. Clearly delineating who's on the team, which is great. What the key deliverables are. There's some great images as well. So yes, already I'm stoked. I'm gonna take a little bit of a deeper dive. Starting with the problem statement, awesome. Additional information, this is great. So one of the easy traps that people can fall into is having too much text and too much detail on your um, portfolio pieces. And for that, I like to compare it to like tools in a toolbox. So if you have, uh, if you're a designer and you have all these different heuristic tools and processes and ways of breaking down different problems, um, you can pick out the specific tools that make the most amount of sense for your project. Um, and that's the sign of someone who's really good and experienced in their role. Um, typically, when I look at those who have just graduated from a boot camp or are a little bit newer in their careers, they'll show all of the processes, all of the tools that they have at their disposal, regardless of whether, whether it actually makes sense to apply to the specific portfolio piece or not. Um, so looking through this, I'm seeing a lot of text, but it's hidden under these um, different accordion areas, which is really nice because if you want to dig deeper, you can, but it's not in your face as you're going through this whole thing, which is awesome. Um, I'm also seeing some wireframing, um, just quick sketches all the way to like actual grayscale work. This is awesome. I would, one thing I would also like to see here are some GIFs or a link to a prototype. And again, it might be in here, but I don't see it in like the main area and that'd be something that I'd be looking for. So consider surfacing it up if it is already in here or including some examples of like gifts of the final product or motion if you worked on that as well. Um, and the fact that there's two projects on here, I think makes sense. Oftentimes I've seen portfolios that have 20 projects and that seems like a lot in any given time. I'd like to see focused attention on what the applicant knows is their skill set and knows that their expertise is and see like what they focus on in that manner. Jill, do you have any feedback on what you've seen already? Um, yeah, I mean, I just want to echo uh, the idea of being platform agnostic or like tool agnostic, like you really can make anything to, to into a great portfolio. Uh, yeah, any tool that you're comfortable with. Um, that can become a great portfolio as long as it tells the right story and it highlights the part of the parts of you and your experience that you want to bring uh, to light. 
Um, and yeah, I, I, I agree. I, this, this portfolio caught my eye as well, uh, Mel, because I just thought it was so well done um, and so uh, clear about what she's trying to communicate. So I think that she did it really well. Yeah, this is great. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan. And then um, some of my mentees that I speak with uh, know that I have strong opinions on personas. Um, so mm -hmm. if I'm seeing you leverage a tool in your toolbox, so to speak, in your portfolio piece, I'm gonna push and um, ask you why you use this tool. And you either have to have a pretty good reason as to why you use it, why you believe it's useful, um, because I'm going to be testing you on that. And just because someone disagrees with me, like I personally don't find per, uh, personas quite, um, quite as useful in my workflow, but so long as you have good valid reasoning for why you're including it and why it's part of your process, that, that is totally fine. And that works for me. But yeah, oh, seeing all the process, chef kissy fingers. That's great. Oh, and here's some gifts. You read my mind. I love it. Great. You already have examples of motion, final product. I'm stoked. Nice. Uh, Jill, do you want me to hand it over to you for the next one? Yeah, sounds good. Um, okay, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Can you all see this? Yep. Cool. Um, so Jeremy, if you're here, maybe you can show your face so that I'm not talking to a, a ghost. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking at Jeremy's portfolio here. Um, just right off the bat, uh, really nice. <laughs> like this kind of just pure black with, um, you know, a little bit of an introduction about who he is and his experiences. Uh, Kind of interesting. He has a Bachelor of Architecture. Um, he has four years of experience. Um, he's led design workshops and right now this is where he's at. Um, this is just really nice, clean to the point. Like I get it from a glance who you are, what you're about, um, kind of have a sort of idea of what type of designer you are in my mind, but let's see whether I'm, I'm right. Um, so uh, I think one thing that I did notice though um, was it was nice that you highlighted kind of top three featured work up here, like one, two, three, and then you've got more work down here. I would say that like this started to feel a little bit, the, the text is very, very small. I don't know whether you, you see that. So if I, let me just inspect it for a second. Oh, totally not working. Um, Yeah, so it looks like it's like, uh, I think 10 points. Yeah, so yeah, so uh, 10 or 11, I think. So um, that uh, like just kind of worries me a little bit because of accessibility reasons. So I think in general, you wanna make sure that your portfolio and the text is about 14 or 16, just to make sure that like uh, it's really readable. So that's something that um, comes to mind just because uh, of the kind of software that I have designed. So um, because uh, the, the software that I've designed has been um, bigger companies, we have to worry about that kind of thing, like uh, accessibility and making sure that everybody can, can, read, uh, can, can use your software. Um, but of course, that's a very small <laughs> matter um, that maybe only certain people might notice. I don't think that's something that everybody might notice, but that was just something that came to my mind when I saw this. Uh, but yeah, let's move on. Um, I really like the fact that you've called out three projects here. So I'm just going to click in and look at one of these. Yeah, I really love that you put it very clearly that like this was your role and your responsibility. I find that that's something that a lot of designers um, tend to forget about, that they tend to talk a lot about the project and they don't talk about what exactly they owned. Uh, yeah, and I really like how there's just like a quick blurb. So I understand that like you couldn't talk too much about this project and that's totally okay. Um, I would have liked something a little bit more maybe, even if it is a is under NDA, 
um, it would be nice to just hear a little bit more about maybe what you learned or like your experience about it. That's possibly something that you could share without um, uh, uh, violating the NDA. Uh, but yeah, this looks like a very interesting project and um, it's nice that you've kind of have it in your website. So I'm gonna move on to the next project. Again, yeah, the very small text, like I love the way it looks, but like it does worry me from accessibility point of view. Yeah, again, I love that you have this. I love that you make it very clear about what your roles and responsibilities are. And your screenshots are beautiful. Um, you know, your context is a good amount, like a good length. Very cool. Yeah, I think to Mel's point, it's like, yeah, we tend, uh, I would say that there are some people who really do read through your entire portfolio and take a lot of time to read through all the texts that you've written. But uh, very often when we're going through so many, we may kind of just kind of skim it and get the, the, the key points. I see those gifts though. Nice. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, I really like this. Uh, I really like this project. Um, I think that you have kind of set the context well and you're showing your solution. Um, I understand that you're not putting a lot of like, um, uh, a lot of the typical, like, um, you know, the whole hog of like wireframes and like personas, like, um, Mel mentioned and all that, but I, I think that, yeah, that honestly can work very, very, very well. Um, I think that it shows uh, your, in some ways, your maturity as, as a designer, that you're just showing specific things that you think are important to this story and not like every single thing that you did like throughout the, the whole project. Mel, did you have any thoughts on this? Um, scrolling down to the bottom, it looks like the final product was this screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, and based on what I've seen now, and granted I'm not driving, so I haven't been able to, to take a look uh, deeper, mm. but um, specifically I'm looking for like what the problem is that's attempting to be solved or like is due to be solved mm. and then like how it was solved. And if you are in-house mm -hmm. versus you are um, consulting our agency side, um, definitely looking to see like, if you are in-house, mm. how are you held accountable for like those results and like next steps you would take uh, for improving mm -hmm. if you had more time, resources, budget, things like that. Um, mm. But yeah, seeing the timeline also is very interesting. Something I don't see in a lot of portfolios and the fact that you yeah. it's quite cool. Yeah, adding, I think setting the stage in the context of how you are operating yeah. within what sort of team makeup, I think makes, yeah. makes a lot of sense to include. Yeah, that's a huge, uh, a very important thing that I think a lot of people forget about. Um, I would say, I think this is a design project, a design systems project though, you know? So I think oh. it's, this was not quite that. Yeah, so I think it was just like, this was where it was used. Yeah. yeah. Perfect, thanks for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah, this looks really cool. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go to your last project. Again, love this. Um, from scratch. Yeah. So I think uh, this is an interesting project where you've had to do a little bit uh, like the design system project showed your visual skill, and this one shows kind of your um, skills with like IA and uh, potentially, yeah, like more complex flows. So that's interesting that you've got like two projects that show off different parts of your skill set. I think that that's always something that is great to see when you can see that like a candidate has experience um, heavily in like a visual side as well as like potentially the, the, the UX side, especially if you're hiring for like a, a UI UX designer or product designer. Yep, nice, nice like final shot. I really love like, you know, the, the little details of like you putting the screenshot in this little like rounded, uh, rounded, um, you know, uh, uh, like image uh, is really nice. I mean, that's just like a nice touch, finishing touch on, on, 
on how you're presenting your work. Yeah, and we've got this down here, it looks great. And of course, the thing, one of the things I always get, oh, I like that so much. I like that you have a little cute cover effect, that's cute. Um, yeah, one of the things that I always look at, of course, the about page, super important. So you had a little uh, introduction to yourself at the home page, and then now you've got like kind of a, a longer um, uh, a bit of information, a longer paragraph about, about who you are and like things that you're into. Yeah, love it. Um, I think this sounds really friendly. It's to the point and uh, it has good like context about who you are and like what type of person you are. I think this portfolio, yeah, and you have your resume here as well, great. Um, this portfolio I feel stands out to me just because it's so clean and clear and like it's it's not it's there's not a lot of like um flash in a way but it's very very uh very very simple and that's that's so difficult to do as we all know as designers taking away is often a lot harder than than putting in so i feel like that's something that's really nice yeah that one single thing that does that does concern me is the is just the accessibility of it just because some of the text is just really really small and um not not i think the the, the contrast uh, may not have been there but yeah that's something that i think uh, uh certain people might look out for more than others mel do you have any thoughts on that yeah like this this text yeah overall um i would agree with your sentiments on here um the about page is pretty important i always check it when i see it on a portfolio um mm -hmm. i want to get to know you as a person and understand like what motivates mm -hmm. you outside of work because we're not all uh, probably living our best lives forever, like super jazzed on pushing pixels. So like seeing what really drives you, what really is interesting to you outside of work also helps me understand you as a whole person. Um, mm -hmm. It is always exciting to see. Yeah. Yeah. I also like your like restraint mm -hmm. in that you don't post mm -hmm. your Instagram, your, I don't know if people still link their Facebook profiles to portfolios, mm -hmm. but I always raise mm -hmm. an eyebrow when I see Instagrams if the Instagram is not strictly work related, um, just mm -hmm. because I I don't know maybe I'm just a hard line like personal is personal and work is work, um, but I don't like conflating the two. And I and if you mm -hmm. put on your portfolio site, that means it's fair game to talk about in interviews and things like that. Mm -hmm. So just something you'd be mindful of, and I appreciate the fact that you didn't include that. Mm. Uh, one last thought before I, I stop sharing. Um, I really like that you put in like who else you worked with as well and you link to them. I feel like that's something that's really cute that I've never seen before. I think that's nice. Shows uh, some kind of like team, team vibes. Yeah, okay, that's it. Thanks for sharing this, Jeremy. Really good work. Thank you, Jill and Mel. Nice, yes. Alrighty, next up, we've got Lily. And this is her homepage. This is the homepage for the uh, portfolio. And I am jazzed already because I can see who you are. I can see like a lot of your personalities in this as well, I feel like. Um, so already Thank I'm you. stoked. Going off of what I just said though, I'm seeing your Instagram here. For your privacy, I'm not gonna click on it, but just know that I see that here and I'm gonna- There is a reason why it's out there. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. All righty. <laughs> So I do illustration as well, and I'm just combining my illustrations with who I am. Awesome. Then that is a <laughs> totally perfect use case for including it. <laughs> nice. Um, so yeah, now we've clicked in. It's opened another tab. Um, I'm going to click into rough linen. Already, like, four projects. Restraint. Again, awesome. Um, I really like the interactions as well, clicking on a project like fades it out and brings it up in a really nice manner. Thank Good you. design starts with the user. Yes, I am aligned. Final deliverables, a live website. Oh, <laughs> yes, amazing. Um, timeline, metrics are right at the forefront. Like I can see it, this project clearly had impact. Amazing, yes, platform, that's cool to know. Context, overview. Yes, so stating your goal or the job to be done by you early on is excellent. I would like to see, and you probably put this a little bit lower, but where you sit in the overall team structure that you're working on, unless you okay. designed, developed, managed the project yourself, I would like to see um, who you worked with. Um, project learnings, next steps, great. 
And then like diving into that metric and what that actually means. Awesome. I'm seeing your process here. I'm seeing that clear process of how you went through discovery, how you went through your competitor analysis, amazing. Wireframes and prototypes. If you have a prototype that was available um, to click through, it would be nice okay. to link it here as well. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. But yeah, solid. Thank you. So much personality in here too, this is great. <laughs> And you're based in San Francisco, what up? Yes. <laughs> and I'm looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, good to know. Um, <laughs> you have your resume, you have a whole slew of people who have said amazing things about you. This is great. Thank you. Um, yeah, Jill, do you have any thoughts before I continue poking around? I love this, I love this image. I think it's very, very <laughs> cute. I think it really shows who you are. Um, and yeah, I really like rec the recommendation section. I mean, I know that that can be, it can be really <laughs> awkward a little bit, like when you uh, ask people to talk about your work, but I do think that it is an important part of like knowing where your strengths lie as a designer and knowing um, what people value about your work. Um, and I think that, you know, I'm sure you had to take the effort to to kind of pull this feedback in and i think putting it here is a really good uh way to show that you know how to um represent yourself well as well you know yeah thank you oh yeah let's see i'm gonna dive into one more project here setting a context ah oh, yes Movement in a portfolio generally gets me pretty stoked. Um, I would ask you to consider some more of the hierarchy on this page. And I'm only saying that because I'm seeing like your section titles, description, mm -hmm. and then I'm seeing a description of the image. This is nitpicky. So take, that, take any and all the feedback that we discussed today as you will. Don't feel like you have to implement any of these. Um, but it seems like if this is a subtext, I wouldn't make it bold and it appears to be bold. Okay. Um, I'm seeing personas here. So just know again, like any tool in the toolbox that you present in here, like I will ask you why you included it. And I expect to hear a pretty solid reasoning on why it was included. Um, yeah. I'm seeing some stuff that's centered in here as well. So some of it's left aligned, some of it is centered. Um, mm -hmm. So I understand why you've centered it. I'd be keen to see what it looks like in other um, alignments. Um, but yeah. And then I saw you had photography as well. Yes, I do. I do a lot of photography for linen, for rough linen. Um, oh, and cool. landscape people, yeah. Wow, nice. <laughs> yeah, some stuff. Um, awesome. Yeah. Any other thoughts, Joe? Uh, no. Um, the photography is nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, this is good stuff. I like I like seeing the competitive analysis in here as well. All your screens, excellent process. Yep, seeing the process, I really like seeing. Oh, you have a clickable prototype in here. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Yeah. well done. Great. Thank you. Yep, so I can, so this tells me you have the chops to do personas clearly um, and prototypes, mostly like prototypes is the big one. And I see that you mm -hmm. have them in here and it's embedded in the website. If it's a yep. link that sh go shoots you out to Envision or something like that, that totally works as well. But the fact that it's embedded in here is a nice touch. Nice. Yeah, that's what I've got. Thanks for sharing. Thank cool. you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate your feedback. <laughs> Share my screen. Um, so uh, I'm looking at Ariel's portfolio. I'm so sorry. I, I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering. Oh, it's Ariane. Hello. Sorry, say that one more time. Uh, Ariane. Ariane. Okay, yeah. great. 
Um, cool. So thanks for sharing your portfolio, Ariane. Uh, so right off the bat, really nice. I like this design with purpose. Um, very eye-catching. Uh, it's very clear um, what is important to you and what's the kind of message you want to share about your work, uh, just at a glance. Um, nicely curated list of two, three, four, and uh, you know, making it very obvious that you are open to being reached out to. I uh, really like that. Um, so yeah, let's just go right into it. I tend to, by the way, I tend to always click the first project that is at the top for a lot of portfolios that I see. And the reason for that is because uh, I want to see the project that they want to tell me about the most. So my assumption as like someone reviewing your portfolio is that the first project you put up there is the one that you want me to look at. So I try to do that because I assume that there's something in there that's, you know, you want to communicate to me. So I don't know if I could give you some perspective of the, the review, but yeah, that's how that's I'm how same. I do it. Um, right, yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay, so a little bit of context, parents, platform, web. Yeah, my role. Yeah, again, uh, one place that I always feel like when designers in general are not very good at, um, but where I think Jeremy did it really well was telling me you did these things doesn't, tell me exactly what I want to know. Like, I want to know like how big was your team? I want to know what type of designer you were. Were you like working with other designers? Were you the lead on the project? Were you, yeah, I just, I kind of want to know who you were because that's what's important to me when I'm interviewing you. I want to know like what you could bring into my team in a way. So um, yeah, this is maybe something potentially that you could improve. And yes, to um, Mel's point, all of our feedback, you know, feel free to ignore it as well. But that that's, yeah, something that could be improved. I like that you have just like one like view prototype here. I'm going to click it. Nice, a Figma link. Let it load. Very cool. And the ambassador. Okay. Paris. Okay. Oh, nice. Cool. It takes a while to load um, all the um, images. I, I figure. <laughs> yeah. I figured. Yay, it's here. Cool. Yeah, interesting. Profile. Nice. Very cool. Oops. Yeah, nice work. Um, I feel like if I were looking at your, so for the interest of time and because like everyone's watching my screen, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but uh, if I were reviewing this on my own, I would definitely spend probably quite a bit of time going through this uh, prototype and clicking it because I think you've really built it out quite nicely and it seems to have quite a few flows um, and and like, um, you know, quite a few pages within your prototype, which is nice. So. Uh, that's probably something that I would have done if I were looking at it. Oh, yeah, yeah, quite a few flows. Yeah, cool. So uh, I'm going to go back to your to your site now. Yeah, very nice uh, representation of your work. You know, big images, icons, interesting. The research that that you did. Yeah, it's great that it's clickable. I was gonna say sometimes I see some portfolios where they have a lot of screenshots of work that has like, you know, little, little, little text, but you can't actually see anything that's in the project. And then you're just like, okay, so I don't know, like it feels a bit like, you know, you're showing it because you wanna show that you did, did some work, but actually I'd love to be able to really like, um, I guess, uh, look closer into the work that you've done. So it's good that I can kind of, um, uh, you know, um, make this big and read uh, some of the text that you have in here. So that's interesting to me. Um, um, one other thing I would like to call out is that I, mm, I really yeah. like how you do this process, which informs this, which then informs this, which yeah. then informs this. Like you are building off mm. of the process that you have. That is, I think, really nice. Yeah, I like that. 
So you have some wireframes here. Yeah, I feel like you've summarized each section pretty well. Oh, interesting. You use hot jar and you did heat maps. That's cool. That's nice. That's interesting. Good summary of like the research that you had. Um, this is quite detailed though. Like I'm seeing you're, you're still yeah, got- Yeah, it, it is. Just, um, so consider, yeah. <laughs> um, consider hiding some of this information and only show the main beats mm. of your project. And although you're gonna be mm. not displaying every single step and every single piece and deliverable of your process, a lot of that can be shown in the in-person interview round or the portfolio review after your mm -hmm. initial conversation with the company. So to break that down even mm -hmm. further, at least from Dropbox, we start with um, reviewing the portfolio on our own, having a phone call scheduled, typically with the hiring manager, with the uh, interviewee. At that point, if you pass, we bring you in for an on-site portfolio interview. And that's the point where you like you lay everything out, you show all of your work, you show receipts, like you show the work that you've done in all of this. Um, the portfolio website, in my opinion, granted use a group of one, but in my opinion is really meant to just get your foot in the door, uh, saying that I have experience doing, delivering on these kind of projects. If you wanna see more, bring me in for an onsite or I guess a digital onsite these days, uh, and then you show those receipts of your work. Mm. Um, so consider paring down a little bit for your projects. I would agree with that. And um, I also think one thing that even if you have kind of put every single step of your process here, uh, I feel like if the, the things that are most interesting to me um, when I'm looking at a portfolio is not necessarily like whether you've kind of gone through this whole process, but what you personally found uh, interesting or difficult or, or like what challenged you in maybe a new way or the, the challenges that you had. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I just noticed you did put your, your kind of about a little bit more about your team here. So that's good. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just would want something a little bit more personal to you rather than kind of like a full uh, kind of breakdown of the process. So you have great, great process here, but the one way that I find is good to elevate a case study is to talk about something specific. So if, I don't know, again, totally like, yeah, just my opinion here, but like if, if it were me, um, you know, and heat maps are kind of a, unusual uh, uh, way of research. I mean, or at least not something that I see used that often. Um, so it could be something that maybe you highlight about like your experience, you know, testing with a heat map, limitations, things that you, you know, found difficult or interesting. Um, yeah, or maybe it's something completely different. Maybe it has to do with managing a stakeholder or getting uh, clarity on a specific problem or fighting for a specific, you know, yeah, advocating for, for, for some type of user or arguing for a certain solution. So that to me helps to elevate this, this type of project from like being a great case study to something that shows your value. Like what did you specifically uh, bring to the project and what did you take from the project that is unique? And um, that's something that I always find interesting to read, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Okay, so uh, am I out of time, Wendy or Felix? I think it might be. I have yeah, another you're question. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, great, great, great work here, um, Ariane. Thank you. All righty. Um, so I'm going to start here with this portfolio. Uh, and honestly, like the load screen even was quite nice. Everything comes in really softly. Like even there's some interaction design aspects in here, which is really nice. Also, like I'm sure it's a no, no surprise to anybody that I am your cookie cutter white person. So the fact that uh, Rishni put uh, their pronunciation in the footer, bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I, I thought it would help. Really, very nice touch uh, and very much appreciated. And I hope I didn't butcher that. 
No, it was perfect. Oh, amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, nice interaction design in here. Where, did you do the illustrations as well? I did, yeah. It was off a YouTube tutorial, but that, yeah, I did it. Amazing. Like, this is just nice. such a nice surprise and delight. Um, it's really cool to see. It's something that I'm going to bring up in the interview, ask you about. Um, and seeing that you have that skill set also is, like, a nice to have little bonus thing that will probably put you over the edge if it's between you and someone else uh, in terms of applying for a job. Um, also, it's clear there's personality in here as well. Not another boring footer. I hear you. Totally. Um, but let's dive into the work. Again, like really nice interactions, which is great. Um, when I first loaded this, it only showed three projects. Yeah, here we go. Um, so this is a great way, again, as Jill mentioned, focusing our attention on the projects that you really want us to look at. Um, I could, of course, then choose to view all, which then shows three more. Uh, but I think that's a nice way of not only showing the breadth of work that you have without being overwhelming. Um, so I'm going to take a look at the first one that's linked here. Oh, wow, this is nice. Okay. Ah, oh, wow. The, this is something I don't normally see. Uh, seeing the steps clearly navigable within a single uh, portfolio piece. Dang. Font choice, great. Colors all work within a specific palette. Like this is, dang, like I feel bad because my portfolio isn't this good. This is quite beautiful to look at, super fun to interact with. It makes reviewing the portfolio a joy. Um, taking a look now deeper at the content here. I'm seeing key insights which are highlighted, pull quotes, like there's a lot of content here, but it's broken up in a way that doesn't make it feel like a lot. Um, so I'm not mad at it. This is great. Um, user flows, sketches, and then using sketch. Nice. Uh, usability testing. Yeah. Seeing that you're testing your iterations. If I'm looking for a product designer or I'm interviewing for product designers, I like to see that they're one working collaboratively with folks outside of their discipline. So think PMs, engineers, uh, user researchers, uh, UX writers, things like that. So seeing that you're mentioning usability testing and you're really thinking outside of your immediate purview, and granted, I don't know, again, like the team makeup that you have here, you say that you're the UX researcher and UI designer. So, okay, you don't have a dedicated UX researcher on your staff, so you are acting in that role as well. So the fact that you include it in here is awesome. That's great. And shows that you have also expertise outside of the immediate product design space. Um, inject some personality, which you clearly do in your portfolio, but it's cool to see you do it actually and work as well. Just like, ah, oh, these illustrations are killing me. It's so good. Yeah, next steps. The fact that you link to next steps as well um, is really nice. Oh, and you're using Pablo's illustrations. Yeah, oh, he's a and you really give, cool plugin. And you give credit too. Amazing. I'm, you know, I'm really struggling to give feedback. I think the feedback that I would give on here, and if you few prototype, get out of here. Like, did you read my mind and think, look at all the things that I'd be looking for in this portfolio? I was updating as you guys were doing giving feedback. No, were you really? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. So that's okay. That is the next level. Yeah. Um, I would look at like metrics that are affected here and Again, I am whipping through this, so I'm not reading every single thing that you've included in here, but I'd be keen to see if this was a real project, how was the impact post-launch? If it launched, what was the impact? Um, but again, you mentioned next steps in here, which is great. Um, yeah, Jill, do you have any feedback on this? Man, you know, uh, this is really, really good work. I just feel like you really um, understand your user and you really understand uh, even, some, yeah, like Mel was saying, even like having that menu at the top that allows us to kind of skip to the section that we're interested in um, and view your prototype. You know, you have that as like a big link all the way at the top, right? Uh, I think it shows a lot of empathy for your user, which is like us. <laughs> yeah. So um, to me, I think it, it reflects really well. 
uh, on the type of the designer that you are and like the skills that you can bring to the to the table. Yeah, dang, dude. Well done. Yeah, even little um, things like you know the the yeah like the way that you've represented your work with like the rounded corners and like uh, it's so consistent all the way through. It's really nice. Wow, yeah. you have like a story. Honestly, I feel inept in my role. This is great. <laughs> yep. Like, this is probably a portfolio <laughs> I'm going to save and reference later yep. on. And I re rework on my portfolio. Um, this is great. Yep. Yeah. I'm having a hard time giving you more concrete feedback than that, than like seeing immediate metrics. Mm -hmm. The navigability of this is awesome. Um, I'm seeing a lot of personality in this, which is great. Like I get to know you, I feel like more as a person than I would if it was just strictly work. And I do that through the color choice you have, the illustrations you've chosen, the interactions, the photographs that you've uploaded, um, and the copy that you've written yourself. So this is great. Yeah. Awesome. Well done. Thank you so much, guys. You know, before you guys move on, just want a big mm -hmm. shout out to Reshni. Reshni <laughs> is actually one of our star students at BrainStation Toronto. And I have had the great fortune to uh, be one of her teaching assistants back in the last cohort too. And I've seen this uh, portfolio when it was submitted as just an class assignment and to see what it is now it's amazing so reshni take a bow big one congratulations thank you tred thank you could have done it without you guys so thank you clearly some really great work coming out of that definitely um okay should i go to the next one wendy do we have time or are we going to q a at some yeah time? i'm just like yes kind of aware so so of so we have we have one 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 more um, yeah. for the Q&A. So Jill, go for it. Go for it. Okay, so um, I'm going to look at Heather's work. Heather, yeah. Um, so I first off, like right off the bat, very cute branding for yourself. So I think it, it can be really difficult, especially to do personal branding uh, when, when you know, it's easier to design for a client, but when it's yourself, it's like, oh my God, what's my logo? Um, but this is very cute. And uh, it's something that really matches the rest of the aesthetic of your website. Um, so yeah, uh, I like that you have a very clean uh, portfolio page. And um, I guess Mel, Mel, <laughs> Mel may caution you against this, integrating your Instagram directly into your website. But I think it's pretty awesome because it's a lot of your work stuff and there's a lot of like your process and whatever you're building. So I think that it does, ooh, did it just jump off me? I'll give it a- This matches my criteria. I approve. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was uh, really nice that it shows like whatever you're working on right now and what you're thinking about as a designer. Very cool. Like a nice way to bring in a bit of personality into your, into your, into your work. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so looking at the page again, uh, really nice uh, like use of images. Like you've got this like dot pattern at the back. You have uh, kind of a very consistent way of, of showing your work. And it's not just like one screenshot. It's very uh, beautiful. It's very nicely done um, in terms of the, the, the design. Okay, so I'm going to go into Speechify. So you have a prototype right here, which I'm going to click on. And then I want to learn more as well. Like Steve. Reading under your control, you've got a brief. Oh, very nice. <laughs> You notice a tweet from the CEO about how he's looking for a designer. Very cool. I like that there's a little bit of a story there and uh, you you tell it very nicely. Yeah. Oh, this is so cute. Good illustrations too, um, yeah. Yeah, this is cute. Uh, is this something that um, you, you got, uh, yeah, is this something that you did for the portfolio or was it something that was part of the, the product? Um, honestly, I was just doodling and when I was trying to come up with a story and I thought it was a good yeah. expression for how my users were interacting with the issue and Love ever it. since I've kind of gotten good feedback on it. <laughs> so I kept it. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Uh, very cool. Um, yeah. Clear like problem statement. And then 
clear like what are you trying to do um, allow users to create their setup and it will save the users more time to reach reading goals <laughs> super cute super super cute i really like that you've like brought in the user and like um you know like comic style that's that's really nice you've got quotes from the test yeah that's that's cool i like this a lot like um, again, I feel like you're displaying a lot of empathy for your user because most of the time, uh, like we were saying before, a lot of the time you're skimming. So if I was like skimming this and going through a lot of portfolios, I'd be like, oh, cute. Oh, read the headline. How can we be one step ahead? Read this like box that you've called out for me already. Um, so that's really nice. Yeah, like you, you're, you're making it very easy for me as your user. And I think that that shows a lot of empathy and, and a lot of awareness of, uh, someone's experience of your work. Again, you're bringing in that dot pattern even within your your um, images here. It shows a lot of attention to detail for me. Like it shows that you're you're going to pay attention to the little things and you're going to understand how it pulls together as like one project and one website. What's happened after this research? Really nice. Yeah. Um, and let me click around the prototype. Oh, okay. Okay. This feels oddly, <laughs> I don't know, the rest of it feels very like beautifully styled, but this feels like a little bit out of place in terms of just the UI. But I mean, yeah, that's just something that caught, caught my eye. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Oh, cool. I like how you have hotspots yeah. present on here too. As someone who is yeah. literally ripping through portfolios, knowing yeah. where to click quickly is very useful. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This is very cute. <laughs> Super cute. Uh, yeah. This is really cute and interesting. I would probably, if, if I were interviewing you, I'd probably ask you a little bit more about this because this is a very opinionated choice that, you know, kind of, um, deviates from how people typically do like speed up and slow down where it's like you know the 10 the 10 second like circle or like the 10 second bag you've got like a rabbit and a, a hare and a tortoise here so uh, very very cute but I would probably want to discuss that a little bit more with you if you were in an interview and I might ask something like of you know uh, why did you choose to do that how did that test uh, you know what what were some of the limitations maybe or like the how would you, yes, yeah, what, what would be some of the limitations of this? And also how would you like overcome those limitations and, and how would you improve it um, potentially? That might be something that I might ask uh, just cause it's such an interesting design pattern. And it's good to have like interesting design patterns, you know, I mean, to not just follow whatever is like out there. Um, Likewise, I would also ask about the cultural meaning, yeah. like being, mm -hmm. yep. Like again, recognizing my background and where I'm from, I don't have uh, knowledge of how other cultures could see a tortoise or a hare. Um, is it consistent yeah. with my understanding of my mental model? Um, is this even meant to exist for an audience outside of my own, outside of the US? Um, those are the kind of mm -hmm. questions I would ask when I saw that. Yep, totally. Uh, and a small the way, note on your protocol. Last... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a drag. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> like you, you just drag it down. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay. Sorry, for some reason, I'm, oh, it's not quite working for me. So when I see stuff like this, Stuck. if I don't understand yeah. how the um, prototype works, I'm yeah. not faulting you for that. That is my own yeah. misunderstanding. And again, giving you the benefit of the doubt because I am not reading your entire portfolio. Uh, yeah. So if a prototype doesn't work as intended, I'm placing that blame on myself. Yeah, usually. Yeah. I, I feel like, yeah. Yeah, honestly, that was Go like on. a weird feature on a, a WXD. So I think I'm going to just change it back to just a tap just to make it easier for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, to, to echo Mel's point, like if I if I if I'm having trouble with a prototype, usually I'm just like, oh, clearly it's like user error. I usually don't think it's like the designer's fault. But that being said, I found like uh, some really good ways of showing prototypes. So like I saw this one prototype that had um, uh, like a like a like like a cursor everywhere that they wanted you to click they would just put a cursor like a little cursor icon there so you could follow the cursor so that was a really nice um touch I felt to like really bring me through a portfolio very quickly and through the exact flow that you want me to go uh and it yeah like Mel was saying if you're kind of flying through it you're kind of like you don't want to be like oh just clicking around being like oh no I'm missing something uh, you want it to be very very obvious what you want me to see as a reviewer of your of your work so that could be one way that you Look at it. Yeah, but I feel like overall, the way that you've structured the information here is just so good. Your, your design is lovely, very clean. The, you know, the little illustrations that you've put in are really, really like a nice touch. Um, I think in general, uh, I, I, you may have noticed that like I'm trying not to critique the work itself too much. And the reason for that is because that's usually something that I might do when I'm talking to the candidate themselves. So I try not to make unless it's like very, very obvious, like, oh, that looks bad. Um, I try not to make assumptions about like what I would think is better. Uh, what I might do is I might write it down, like, oh, I wanna ask the person about this, I wanna ask the person about that. And then within the interview, I'm gonna find out about like, what was their, what was their rationale to do one thing versus another. Um, and, and then uh, that gives me a little bit of insight onto like how they think about about a product and how they think about design. Yeah. So if I were interviewing you, like I will ask specifically about the icon, I would ask about, um, uh, yeah, like some of, yeah, like that that plus, that add um, button uh, that came out there that didn't fully match. I might ask you a little bit more about that um, just to get your like rationale and your process there. Uh, yeah, I think those would be the, the main two. Um, yeah, and then um, uh, you, you talk about like your next goal would be to continue to research. And um, so like, you know, a, a kind of an easy question that I would ask uh, uh, would be like, you know, what would be areas that you would want to research since you called it out here? Yes, 100%. So, yes. yes. Doing more research is not enough. I would want to see specifically uh, what you would be looking into because that helps mm -hmm. me again get insight into your process and how you work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, great work. Yeah, nicely done. Thank you. Okay, we're in our Q&A session now? Yeah, let's do this. Into Great, so how does this work? We just pick people who have the hand raise emoji. Do you see any? Nope. Not seeing any. Yeah, I'm just not sure. Oh yeah, here, Alex. Oh, Alex. Oh. Um, is it okay if I just ask my question unmuted instead of typing? Go for it. Yeah. All right. Um, do you have any tips uh, for a portfolio that uh, is a little less conventional UX, like maybe someone's focusing on just like being a UI designer or maybe being just like a UX researcher. Um, like what, how would you approach case studies that might not involve a whole process? Ooh, um, Jill, I'm not sure I have a great answer for that given that I'm strictly product design, uh, but I can come up with a good answer after you answer. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, likewise, I don't think that I've reviewed, I, I, I have never interviewed for roles like um, UX writer or UX researcher, those are handled by those teams. So yeah, again, to most point, I don't know if I'm the best person. And uh, on top of that, I've only interviewed for product designer roles. So um, I would say that I think in general, a good rule of thumb for all, all projects that involve uh, like working within the design team and working with other design stakeholders is um, showing how you handle those stakeholders. So I feel like um, 
whether you're going for like UI designer or like UX researcher or UX writer, that part of the process is always a very important one. And the reality is you will be interviewed by people who are probably outside of your, outside of your team. Um, like you will be interviewed by a research person, but also by like probably a designer, probably by like a PM, that kind of thing. So I think talking about like stakeholder management and like your process would be, would be a useful thing to, to call out. Yeah, echoing everything Jill said, um, I'm aligned with that. I would also recommend if you are applying to multiple jobs with different um, titles, like if you're applying for a product design role and you're also applying for a UX design role, mm. I would even go so far as to making two separate portfolios mm. because the skill set that you're going to be mm. looking for in one versus the other could be vastly different, especially depending on the company that you're hiring for. So if you were to apply for like a UX design role at Google, that's going to look different than a product design role at a small, small startup where a small startup is going to expect you to be a jack of all trades, whereas UX at Google is hyper-focused and very specific. You won't be doing research, you won't be doing writing because they have whole teams dedicated to that. Um, that is a lot of work and that is a lot of overhead. Uh, Sophia shared a really great comment in the chat that I saw that you can quickly duplicate pages in Notion. You can do that in Dropbox Paper too. Uh, but you can quickly duplicate pages and custom tailor <laughs> those uh, portfolios to the jobs that you're applying for, um, which I think is very useful if you're applying to do different titled type of roles. And I hope that answers your question a little bit, at least. That does. Thank you. Awesome. Looks like Sahil also has a hand raised. Else? Okay. Hey, so my question is, is it better to have like a text heavy portfolio or a graphic heavy portfolio? I would say it depends on the role that you're applying for. Um, if you're applying for UI designer, graphic designer, like having something that has a lot of that work present is gonna be super useful. Um, I'm not familiar with UX research type portfolios, what they look like, um, but I imagine UX research type portfolio will be very text heavy, documentation heavy. Um, so I would definitely skew your portfolio based on what you're applying for. Uh, Jill, what would you say? Yeah, I would agree. And I feel like um, just like, you know, Heather's project was a good example of how to structure your content. So I feel like even if you have like a crap load of content and that's very important to, to show your work, I feel like you can structure it in a way, use typography, use, um, you know, uh, different layouts to really make it easy to go through your work. So no walls of text. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's also a, an interesting question I saw in the chat um, from Che. che. Uh, if someone has programming experience, would you recommend or expect them to code their own website, or is having it on Webflow or Squarespace okay, even though it might seem like cheating? Personally, um, unless you are going for like a combination like developer plus designer role, or you are going for like you know those like creative technologist type roles that involve coding like unless the role that you're going for involves coding to me I'm very very um as I was saying at the start I'm very very tool agnostic like you can use anything anything if it's like uh, as long as it shows uh your work and it represents you well so no 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 concept of cheating for me what do yeah, you think and though? in terms of what tools you're using so long as you have experience with a design tool I'm not going to hold that against you. Like if you're using Sketch and I'm using Figma, Dropbox, or you're using another tool, um, hell, even if you're using uh, something like, oh my gosh, any of the like uh, Adobe products that were super popular maybe um, a few years ago, that all those skills are totally transferable. So long as I know that you are willing to learn a new tool to design with, I'm not going to hold that against you. That's totally fair and understandable. Yeah. Um, let me see. Um, I was looking that's in there. My story. Sorry? Oh, sorry. That's, that's my question. Oh, great. Um, yeah, thanks for the advice. Um, I think my question is asking more like if I know like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, um, would you expect me to be able to show that within the portfolio via like coding parts of the website? Or rather like instead of using Squarespace where you just kind of like um, drag mm. the parts that you need yeah. and like just fill yeah. in the text? Yeah, I feel like if that's something that you want to differentiate yourself as, 
like you want to be you want to go for roles where the designer is also the developer um then or, or the designer has to know like developer software for example like for some development uh for some coding companies that hire designers, they really want their designers to also be coders. So I think if you're going for that type of job, uh, uh, then yes, I think that that's a good way to differentiate yourself. And that's like something you can say proudly that like you coded your own website. But honestly, I think if you're going for like a, a typical product design role or a typical UI UX role, it is not a plus point um, I wouldn't say it's something I'm like, wow, this person coded, because really there, there may not be a need for it. Um, in fact, uh, I would say that when I have seen some designers coding their own website, it has worked against them sometimes because they have tried to do very, very, very unique um, kind of, they try to break out of the typical molds because so, they're showing that, you know, I coded this from scratch. This is something that I made. So they put in a lot of patterns and and, and interactions and th that may not necessarily make sense or, or may be very outside of the norm, but may be very difficult for me as a user to go through. So again, empathizing with your, your user as like someone who looks at a lot of portfolios, if yours is like drastically different and it's got a lot of um, like, you know, it's got a different kind of navigation, there are menus in different places, which is what I've seen for some for some designers who have coded their own website. Um, sometimes that can be like, almost a bad experience. So you have to be very careful. I feel if you're, if you're going to code your website, it has to be a very good experience. It has to be good on mobile, for example. That's something that I've seen where people, they code out their own website and then it like sucks on mobile. And then you're just, you just kind of feel like, oh, that's, that's a pity. That's a good point. Sometimes I look at pro portfolios exclusively on mobile just because I'm running yeah. between meetings or it's the end of the day and I'm on my commute home and I still want to go through the queue of portfolios to review. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I will exclusively look on mobile. Um, uh, when it comes to that question, I don't expect to see proof of that in your portfolio, but I will ask you about it 100%. Uh, and I will ask what mm -hmm. projects you have developed, what sort of experience you have in mm -hmm. that space. Um, so take that as you will. Um, I see there's a hand up from Angela. Yes. Hi. Um, thank you for hosting this. Um, I was wondering if you have any advice for someone who's maybe has a broad skill set and like went to a liberal arts school. Um, so most of my projects in my portfolio are like front end development and a bit of design because mm -hmm. the end product was actually developed. And so most of the effort was spent on developing it. So I was wondering like, if you have any like advice for maybe having more user research or how to get more UI uh, projects in the portfolio. If I wanted to say like, do product design at a startup, for instance. Yeah, well, um, I think uh, if you, ahead, Jill. no, I was gonna say uh, I think if you if you're looking to work at a startup, I think you having like a lot a very broad experience really works for you because I think a lot of startups need you to be a little bit of you know, uh, Jill Jill of all trades. So um, you know you you have to do the branding, you have to do the marketing, you have to write the PR com statements. So. In a way, if you're going exclusively for startups, I think you can highlight the, the breadth of your experience um, and you can show that you've done lots of different types of work. Uh, I would say that if you're going for not a startup, um, that can work against you because it can be like, well, I don't know how to place this person or I don't know how to hire this person because I don't really get what's the thing. Um, so that can be a little bit difficult so i think if you're going for not a startup you should try to you should try to focus your you should try to focus your work and your attention into specific areas of the roles that you're going for but if you're going for a startup as you mentioned um yeah play it up you know i can do all the things yeah okay i'm gonna echo that exactly um <laughs> again like if you're applying to like a google they want you to be hyper focused and they want to see evidence of yes. that hyper focused amount. Um, yeah. But if you're applying to a small startup, they want to see that you have the ability to act independently while also managing all these other yeah. tangent and fields. Um, so yeah, I'm totally aligned with you on that, Jill. Uh, Lily, you've been so patient. Thank you for waiting. And thank you again for being brave enough to show your portfolio in front of this audience. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, this question is more after, let's say my portfolio gets um, choose for a company 
Um, I just wondering if it's true that you as a designer have to have a keynote with all your case studies to show in the interview. Oh, I'm so glad you asked this question. Um, it's, it's sort of a unfortunate element of the portfolio review that is in person as opposed to on your website, but people fully expect you to have a separate keynote, whether it's a keynote, PowerPoint, something that isn't your same website. Like if I'm going through your same website in the portfolio review, I'm wondering what other, because ideally it's just like, again, your portfolio website is getting your foot in the door. So it's like showing the high notes, showing the major beats of your process, but you're not including all of your documentation. You're not showing those receipts. Uh, so in that in-person portfolio review, or I guess the one-on-one -on -one portfolio review, I am fully expecting to see full receipts, your full process, the highs and the lows. I wanna know what went well, what crashed and burned, and I wanna see evidence of that as well. Um, often the projects, side note, that include crashing and burning, I have one of those in my portfolio, are some of the best because you sort of get to laugh about it. It's all in the past. You learned a lot from it and you know that that issue or that user test that went terribly wrong in my, point, or in my instance won't happen again. Um, so yeah, I am very keen to see a separate sort of presentation. I want to see the walkthrough. I want to see the details. Um, so yes, fully expecting there to be a separate presentation. Jill, how about you? Yes, plus one. And uh, yeah, I want all the like um, interesting, weird, funny, strange things that you couldn't put in your public portfolio. Uh, that's what I want to hear about. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you got it. Um, Mosope, I see you have an emoji hand raise. Yeah. How do I pronounce your name? I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Mosope. Thank you. Thank you for that. Oh yeah, I get that all the time. It's pronounced Mosope. Yeah. Mushope. I, I, and great tip from that on my on my portfolio website. I actually put the way to pronounce it in there. Thank you. And I and wanted to say I love Dropbox paper. I'm always an advocate for it. I use it everywhere. It's so I'm not gonna trash the other people, but I use it a lot. So my question basically <laughs> is coming from so far. I have some experience working and all that, and I work in a very sensitive environment where I can't put the work I'm stuff I'm working on on my portfolio because it's very sensitive. And I've written an NDA that can get me fired if I have my work out there. So let's say in the future, what's the best way to showcase those who work? without, you know, just putting it there and having the whole world or our company still steal our ideas. Yes, totally. Um, so Jill, do you want to tackle this one first? I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, I don't mean sure. to take it. No, not at all. Um, I, I saw an interesting uh, portfolio that basically white labeled the work. Like, so they didn't put the client, they didn't put who it was. They just put like a, they created a fake brand name. They took out anything that was specific to that company and then they put the whole project on there so I don't know how that would play with an NDA but that was kind of an interesting solution uh I I couldn't tell which company it was for so maybe that was enough um but maybe not they also didn't show the final uh like prototype it was a lot of like process things so it was a lot of like we struggled with this problem there was this specific like a technical limitation which they didn't and say what it was but then we went for this solution so I think it still worked pretty well because it was very clearly stated up top that like this project is protected by like an NDA so I want to just highlight the things about it that were interesting or challenging for me personally and it was still a really interesting like project to go through like that showed a lot about that designer oh that's great that's an excellent idea and one that I haven't yet seen um but that would be a perfect way of getting around that NDA um, I've seen people get around this because Disney, Apple, Google, a lot of companies are very, very keen on keeping their information under wraps, especially for work that hasn't yet shipped. So this is common um, in a lot of companies. The way I've seen folks get around it is that they will list uh, the company name and say what role they had at that company but they will not show the work and will only show the work in person, um, which I have done in my career as well. Like, especially for stuff that hasn't shipped, regardless of the company, if it's under NDA, you cannot publish it publicly, uh, but typically speaking one-on-one -on -one with people, again, in that in-person portfolio review, being able to have that keynote, that PowerPoint slide that shows all of your work, that is the time that you can then reveal that work. Um, 
which I've seen in my career, but that is an excellent question. Yeah. I would say there was one oh, okay. interesting Thank like you. conversation. I, there, there was one interesting conversation I had um, with a very senior designer who was really turned off. Oh, sorry. Am I, am I cutting in and out? Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Yeah, know? we hear you. Okay, cool. Um, there, uh, there was a really interesting conversation I had with a very senior designer who, who said that, um, uh, who was very turned off by a candidate who showed a sketch file. Um, so like, uh, it was like an NDA, it was like an NDA project. And then, uh, uh, yeah, like uh, that person um, showed like in progress work. So to her, that was like a huge like integrity problem. Um, and ultimately that that's what like ended up in her like rejecting that person, even though the work was good. So I would just be careful. We're, we're all very used to NDAs and you know, um, like if yeah, if you've worked for a couple of years, you've been you've had to deal with the NDA. So I think it's a matter of balancing like respecting that client and respecting that company, but also showing the good work that you've done. Great question. Yeah, um, I think Basuda is next. Basuda. Uh, hi, hello. Uh, thank you so much for this session, and thank you everybody for sharing your portfolio. This was super helpful. So uh, my question is, uh, would you have any piece of advice for international applicants? And uh, uh, when recruiting, do you prefer candidates within the same city or country or would you be open to people relocating also? Um, I, can, <laughs> I can answer this one because Automatic is a 100% remote company from, from day one. So for the last 15 years, Automatic, which is the, the WordPress company, has been has been remote. So they are very, very uh, passionate about diversity in hiring, not just um, uh, in the typical way that we define diversity, but also like from around the world, like from lots of lo lots and lots of different countries and bringing in the perspectives from those countries. So I would say um, like for a company like Automatic, as well as I think other similar like 100% remote from day one companies, I think that diversity is important. Um, you can usually go and see in their in their website around like recruiting. Uh, I would say that particularly smaller companies may still want people to be within the same time zone or have overlapping hours, uh, just depending on the way that they work. Yeah. Yeah, uh, when it comes to Dropbox, I don't wanna speak on behalf of our massive company, uh, who, which we have offices all over the world, uh, fortunately. Mm -hmm. However, given the recent legislation that just passed um, our executive order of limiting H-1B visas moving forward, I cannot speak to our process and what that looks like now. I can say that we have sponsored H-1Bs. We continue to sponsor H-1Bs with um, current employees. Uh, and when it comes to remote, and distributed workforce, like it is becoming abundantly clear that this is the future. Dropbox is very much moving towards that. Um, so definitely be on the lookout for remote jobs, not only within Dropbox, but Silicon Valley and elsewhere, because I feel like it's just a tidal wave and we're you're only gonna fight against it if you're not including the global workforce at this point. Yeah, Thank you so much. I'd agree with that. Cool, uh, Nihal? Um, yeah. Hi, are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, my question is that I worked on a project in the last semester on a usability valuation for a product. And now that company has been acquired by Microsoft. So is there any change that I can work on uh, in the case study since that company has been acquired by Microsoft? I mean, is there anything that I can do along uh, like something along the guideline style guidelines of Microsoft? or should I let that project be as it is? Hmm, that's interesting. Thoughts if it now. hasn't, if it hasn't, um, if the project wasn't made within the guidelines of Microsoft, because I was pre-acquire, acquiring of your company, I would say let it lie, um, because that is representative of the work that was completed at that point. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Maybe you can put a note that it was, you know, acquired. Maybe I mean that might be an interesting like thing to talk about as well. 
Um, I think uh, people who have gone through acquisitions know that it can be a very interesting experience for the design team um, when you start like integrating your products or you start integrating your, your brands. Um, so that could be, you know, an interesting experience that you can just talk about during an interview as well. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right, that's, that's our last question. So sorry, um, for, for the rest of the questions, we'll put it up on our website. Ladies, thank you so much. Uh, this is such a good work done. Um, really enjoyed the portfolio review. Can we just get um, everyone to turn on your screen, please? If you realize that today we have everyone like turn, turning off. <laughs> Let's do a wee thing, okay? Yeah, this is a big deal because this is the photo that's going to go on LinkedIn, right? <laughs> yeah, it's going to go on LinkedIn. Guys. It's going to go on LinkedIn. So um, sure that you guys are, you know, like glamorous or anything that, that, that you want to call it. But uh, yeah, so let's let's do it, shall we? Okay, one, two, three. Okay, let's go to the second page because there's like four pages here. We got to go through all four. So you never know which page uh, you might be on. So get ready. Oh. Um, all right, one, <laughs> two, three. Okay. One, to the third page. Again. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Right, and the last page. All right, one, two, three. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Nice. So, um, like I mentioned earlier, can we just get everyone to, uh, I think Felix will share this screen for you guys to share on um, LinkedIn or anywhere on your social media. Help us to spread the word, um, share it with your friends because we just want more designers, whoever's passionate in design to come join us and learn th uh, stuff with uh, one another. It's a community for everyone, inclusive, do that, share that, um, share your stories and experience. Uh, if you like anything at all, please shout out to Mel and Jill. Thank you guys so much. Um, I would just end off with this uh, beautiful quote that I just found um, in Inspire the Collective. Uh, let me know if you can see this. Yeah. Expand your time, expand your perspective, and expand your thinking. All right, guys? Amazing. Thank you all so much uh, for turning up and tuning in today. Bye yeah, bye. Thank you, thank you yeah, for sharing and, your work, everybody. Yeah. So those who want to stay, you can stay for a thank while. You the LinkedIn or anything like that. Yes. All right, yeah. you guys. We gotta go around, you know. So I know you can you feel it's true. You guys can, you know, uh, feel free to leave the chat room right now. Um, we are we have reached the end of coffee hour, so there's a lot of LinkedIn profiles there. So feel free to add each other, and yeah, see you guys on the next coffee session, coffee hour session. And thank you, Mel and Jill, for joining us. Thank you all. See ya. Thank you.
Bye. 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 Bye.